Welcome to Church at Home. As always, it is a joy and a privilege to share the word with you, to, in a sense, be able to spend time together with you this morning. I long for the day again we can meet together in person. But in the meanwhile, I'm comforted knowing that we are unified because we have the same spirit of the living God dwelling within us. What a time we find ourselves in. As if COVID and lockdown wasn't enough, we now have the utter lawlessness in parts of the country. The military has been deployed. People are confused. People are scared. It's definitely not a boring time. In John 16 verse 33, we find a passage which has always been a strange sort of encouragement to me over the years. In it, it's Jesus speaking, and he says to us, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. This verse to me serves as a reminder that life in this world will not always be easy. It won't always be comfortable, but take heart. Jesus has overcome the world. And perhaps for a moment, we should just stand still there, remind ourselves that wherever we are, whatever we find ourselves in, Jesus has overcome the world. A question that is often asked that comes to my desk regularly is, the question is, in these turbulent times, what is the role of the church? I think this is such a fantastic question. When I use the word church here, I'm talking about the collective of the followers of Jesus. The body of Christ, it's also called the household of God, the pillar and the foundation of the truth. Obviously, the church stood as far as possible. We should insist in practical matters. And this is particularly true for the churches in closer proximity to events on the ground. In the past, and we will endeavor to do so again, we partnered with local churches to support their work. Even today, after I've done recording this, I'll be on the phone speaking to some pastors in KwaZulu-Natal, asking how can we take hands? How can we support the great work that they, as the church, are doing there, being the salt and the light? And we will obviously keep you updated in ways that we can partner together to support those churches. As important as that practical support is, Our role as the church is much bigger than only in the practical. In Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 onwards, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, a passage, sections of which we know really well. He came to the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And then he asked him, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. And now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. And then the bit that I'd like us to focus on for a moment this morning. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. The role of the church includes the practical, as we mentioned earlier, but also and importantly, that of leading our nation spiritually. This leadership is exercised through our prayers, but also through our words and through our actions. And when I say church, I don't mean only church leaders and organizational entities, but you and me, every one of us as followers of Christ. How we act, what we tolerate, both privately and publicly, this sets the bar for the nation. This is a tremendous responsibility. If we, you, me, the church, if if we think and act in ways that are lawless, that spirit will manifest through the nation. If we think and act in ways that are gracious, graciousness will manifest in the nation. If we pursue divisiveness, divisiveness will be the order of the day. If we live as peacemakers, peace will be abundant all around. We have a responsibility to wield the keys of the kingdom 
this authority that we have been given to wield it well. Paul reminds us in Ephesians that we aren't fighting against people. Right now in our nation and in the nations of the world, whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, right now here in South Africa, this lawlessness, the riots, the protests, we are not fighting against people. Our battle is always a spiritual one. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, Paul writes and he says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor, so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So what do we as the church, you and I, what do we do? Well, firstly, we pray. There is power in your prayer. I cannot stress this point enough. A couple of weeks ago, I shared about the the fact that I believe God has called us to pray. Let us pray. There is power in your prayer. As we saw a few weeks ago, your prayer changes things. The God we pray to hears our prayers. He hears your prayer as a believer, as a follower of Christ, leading our nation while taking these keys of the kingdom that he has given us. One of the things, the first thing, that we do is we pray. Elijah was human, just like you and me, and he understood something about the keys of the kingdom. He knew that he had the keys to lock and to unlock rainfall over his nation. And then, while we're praying, as we continue to pray, we wage war in the spirit by acting in the opposite spirit. If the prevailing spirit is one of lawlessness, We should seek even more than normal to be obedient to every governing authority. If the prevailing spirit is division, we should seek actively opportunities where we can advance unity in both our words and in our actions. If fear is prevalent, we should oppose it by acting in faith. Faith with the accompanying works tying into our series on Nehemiah. I believe that was such an important prelude for us to where we are today that God would have us be a people of faith within our environment. People of faith who trust God, who know God, who are committed to praying, but who also understand that there are actions that accompany that faith. And so as Christians, firstly, we pray, but then also we act in exactly the opposite of what the world, the carnal, the flesh says we must. When the people around us, our environment, our circumstances, our communities are saying we should act in in anger, then we know that we should do exactly the opposite of what the world is saying. We should then act in meekness. I believe that whatever our response in every circumstance, it should never be born out of human anger or frustration. We've seen that so many times this year that the wrath of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. But our response should always be born from the Spirit of God. We should act as sons and daughters led by the Spirit. As we close today, I'd like us to read from Romans 12, where Paul shares with us something about acting in the opposite spirit. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, 
Give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil overcome you, but overcome evil with good. And so this morning, in closing, I want to invite you. Let us pray. Let us pray for God's kingdom to come. Let us pray for God's will to be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray for salvation. Let us pray for revival to sweep through our nation. Let us pray that he would give us grace and wisdom that we may lead our nation well. And let us use the keys we have been given and use them wisely. May I pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you that today we can gather here today, Lord God. In all of these different locations, Lord God, but gathering together in the Spirit and in your name. Thank you that it's the same Spirit who rose Jesus from the dead, who dwells within us, every one of us, wherever we may be, that we are united by your Spirit, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that in the midst of all of the chaos, you have overcome the world. Lord Jesus, that we can find rest and peace in you. That in this world, we will have many trials. This world will not always be comfortable. But nevertheless, you have always overcome. And so, Lord, I pray for every hearer. I pray for every single one, Lord God, who's watching this message today, that you would stir within us more of a desire and a passion to follow you, Lord God. That you would release greater peace upon us, that we may live and act from peace, Lord. God, I pray that we may grow in our prayer, that we would be prayers for our nation, for our leaders, for every person, Lord God, that you have placed within this nation. But as much as we are praying people, Lord God, that we would be leading, that we would be leading with our actions, privately and publicly, Lord. That lawlessness would not be found in our lives, Lord God, but we would live lives of divine order. That we would set the bar in the spirit that as the enemy comes in like a flood, that through us, Lord, you would raise up a standard of what purity and holiness looks like. So we commit our lives to you. We commit who we are to you. We thank you, Jesus, that in the midst of a broken and a breaking world, you came in an opposite spirit to heal, to restore, and to make us whole. And we choose to hold on to and live by that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. It is such a privilege to share together. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel right over here. And you can watch the video that will appear here as well. It will bless you as well. God bless you. Have a phenomenal week.